Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, I just want to uh, thank you um, for having me here um, to talk about uh, <laughs> a first novel. Um, I, I don't know, um, well, I guess this audience would know. Um, first novels are, are fairly notorious uh, for being published and, you know, kind of disappearing in, into the vacuum, um, no matter who the author is. And there's a very uh, unfortunate record of uh, essayists and nonfiction writers um, who go off to pursue fiction. Uh, and if only to preserve our um, impressions of their nonfiction writing and our memories and their, you know, their, their reputation in our minds, uh, we swiftly forget that they uh, wrote uh, fiction. So I'm gonna take it uh, something as, a, as, a, as an honor, no small honor, um, you know, to, to be invited here uh, to talk a little bit about about the water dancer, um, so I, you know one of the things I I, I really want to emphasize is the age of this book, um, because I think uh, we you know obviously see a book at the time of its publication, and oftentimes to the reader again maybe not to this audience there's a sense that this thing sort of kind of popped out fully formed, but I think, you know, as, as several of our authors on the, on, on the panel have done, um, I'd like to take you back through the, you know, biography of this book, uh, speaking on its inspiration and, and where it came from. Um, so there, there are two things. Uh, if you could see behind me, there's a bookcase uh, filled with uh, books from uh, the Dungeons and Dragons universe, which I was enticed with and entranced with when I was a kid. Uh, some comic books, which I was also entranced with when I was a kid and what I have uh, the luxury of to this very day, in fact, still writing. Um, my childhood was kind of split between uh, two worlds. There was that world, but then there was a, another world that was also, also mythical and also you know, magical uh, that was there, but was not presented as such. And that was the history of my people. And that was specifically the history of my people uh, under the 250 years of enslavement in this country. Uh, the, the era of enslavement, this country, I always emphasize to, pe to people is much longer or in enslavement on these shores, I should say, for African-Americans is much, much longer than the period of our freedom on these shores. Um, and I came up you know, in a time when Black History Month was really gaining purchase in the public schools and so, uh, Harriet Tubman was like a, you know, a mythic saint uh, when, 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 when I was a, a, a kid. Um, she was from Maryland, where I went to school and where, where I'm from. And so the stories of, you know, her escapes and her rescues and everything were, were told to all of us. Um, black History Month was always, you know, a big deal. We were told about these Black people who had done, you know, X, Y, and Z. You know, some of them even working on the Underground Railroad. And yet, and I don't know why this is, but there was always this kind of earnesty in how um, that story was presented. A, a kind of, I, I think because this country leaned so hard on, on black people as a source of morality and black stories as a source of, of, of morality and perhaps even because we've been hesitant to think about that as you know, anything that could be characterized as entertainment, uh, we lean on it. And so there was always this kind of eat your vegetables approach uh, to black history, to figures like Harriet Tubman when I was a kid, it, it took me becoming much older and reading about the Underground Railroad and reading about um, history uh, as an older person to realize that the real life comic books was actually that history that I was getting when I was a kid. But the real life Dungeons and Dragons was actually in the stuff that I was reading about as a kid, even if it wasn't presented as such at the time. And so, I, you know, I had a period where I did a you know a considerable amount of reading. Um, circa 2008, 2009, around then, you know, on, on the Underground Railroad, on, you know, the history of African Americans under enslavement, and so many of the stories just really, really stuck with me. And about that time, I had finished my first book. And, um, you know, I was, it was, you know, certainly thought by my agent and my editors that I should try fiction. And almost immediately, um, you know, I went back to that story. You know, I went back to the stories, I, you know, I had been reared on. You know, I went back to this idea of, of an underground railroad and, and, I, and I thought of it as something not envisioned so much as, a, uh, as I said, each of vegetables, you know, as 100 facts that everybody should know about Black people, not so much as a, you know, Black History Month commercial that you see in your programming, not so much as 
a list of facts that might be dispensed at your Kwanzaa celebration, um, but quite differently as something that you might actually enjoy, consider thrilling, um, and consider exciting. And so my notion of the Underground Railroad was more like a spy rink, because in my mind, that's, that's exactly what they were. And to write it almost as spy fiction. Um, but as I did the research, you know, on the firsthand accounts of the people from the time, you know, one of the things I found is, in fact, a lot of that fiction or a lot of, you know, the way those folks saw the world was actually induced, you know, much of what, you know, Carla referred to in her, her earlier so what we call in fiction magical realism. The world of magical magic and myth was all around the world of, uh, of the enslaved. And so I, I thought about what it would meant for me, for me to actually buy into that. And uh, you know, uh, go you know as, as as deep as I possibly can, you know, into that. And so that that was like a um, a big thing for me. Um, and so when I wrote the Water Dancer, I was thinking about an adventure story, you know, and I was thinking in many ways of upending the way we think about myth in this country. Um, our stories oftentimes, you know, lean on to, to, to be frank, a, a kind of white myth and, and white canon. Uh, we're big on, for instance, our you know, ancestry in, in, in Europe and, you know, Lord of the Rings and everything. And obviously I love that. Like I said, I'm a huge Dungeons and Dragons. I was a huge Dungeons and Dragons head. But one of the things that, you know, implicitly was argued in um, The Water Dancer was that in fact, the true American mythology, the truest mythology is actually in the stories that happened right here on these shores. Uh, what is thrilling and what is exciting and, and what is ours is exactly the thing that we so often want to erase, the story of enslaved people in this country. And I can see that in the culture. You know, you watch Mad Max, you know, Fury Road, it's a movie I love. What is that but a story of the Underground Rail Railroad and the escape from enslavement? That's exactly what it is, you know? And um, for me, what I was doing was trying to reach back into, you know, the pure, you know, of, of, of what, you know, our, our original source material was for all of those stories in, in the first place. The last thing I'll say is it was extremely um, important as I was having that realization to me to have a character like Hiram Walker who was having this realization himself. Um, in addition to being, you know, an attempt to render, uh, I would argue, uh, the Underground Railroad almost as genre fiction, the character Hiram Walker is on a voyage of discovery himself. He is, you know, in a most, you know, typical sense in a, in a coming of age narrative, but he's also in the process of understanding who the real heroes are in his world and who they are not. Uh, he comes up, you know, is born on a plantation. His father is white and is the owner of the plantation. His mother is, is not there. And he comes up in many ways worshiping the myths that he spoon fed by his father. And the process of the book is him coming to realize that the true stories, the true myths, the myths that actually reflect things about the world and reflect things about his history are actually uh, uh, with him. Obviously, I'm very much in love with this book. <laughs> I'm very you know, happy about it, I'm very pleased with it. It took me 10 years to write. You know, I, I look forward to digging back into the world of fiction again. Um, and if, if I have you know, done anything to convey that, that love and that, that affection for the world in the book, you know, I, I hope that it, you know, might be something that, you know, you, you guys yourselves would consider as conveying it also. Thank you.